Mr. Nathan here coming at you with another episode of Hymn Stories. Today we're going to be breaking down the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the history, where the song came from, then we're going to look at the words, and then finally we're going to sing. All right, ready? Let's go into the history of A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So the history of a mighty fortress is our God starts with a man by the name of Martin Luther. He was a German man that lived in the 1500s. That was a long time ago. And he wrote the song. He wrote the music and the words. Sometimes when we look at these hymns, we find out that someone wrote the words and another person wrote the music. Martin Luther did both. So in German, the hymn that he wrote is actually called Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott, but we know it as a mighty fortress is our God. Now, where it actually comes from, many people think that he was inspired by a psalm in your Bible. In the Bible, there's the book of Psalms, and many people believe that Martin Luther was inspired by Psalm 46. So I'm just going to read really quickly from Psalm 46, and when we get into the song, you're going to see that there are some similarities there. So Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. So there it's talking about God being a fortress, talking about God being a protector. So many people think that Martin Luther was inspired as he read his Bible And being a musician, being a poet, he wrote this hymn. Many people believe that it was written between 1527 and 1529. But before that, what a lot of people knew Martin Luther for was he started to translate the Bible. The Bible was written in Latin at the time, and a lot of people couldn't understand it. It was very difficult for them to understand what it said. So Martin Luther didn't like that, so what he did is he wanted to translate it into German, a more common language that many people could understand. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's really hard for me even to read my English Bible. But he felt the same way, that it shouldn't be something that people can't understand, so he wanted to translate it into German. So he translated the New Testament in 1522. He went through the whole New Testament and translated it into German. So many people already knew of Martin Luther, but then he also wrote a lot of songs. So around 27, 1527 and 29, many people believe he wrote, Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott, or A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And what he's talking about, and we'll get into it more with the words, is that there's a struggle. Being a Christian, it's not always easy. So his main theme in this hymn is that it's not always going to be easy times. Sometimes you're going to have hard times. And he talks about that throughout this hymn that we're going to sing in a minute. But that doesn't take us all the way there. We have the music and we have the words, but the problem is we have the words in German. So unless you know German fluently and you feel comfortable singing songs in German, the rest of us are kind of out of luck. So maybe you heard, Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott, and you said, yes, we're going to sing it in German. Sorry, we're going to sing it in English, but how did it get translated into English? So how that happened is a little later in 1853, so that's a long time after 1527, there was an, a man by the name of Frederick Hedge, and give a little bit of background of him, he was born in Massachusetts, so he was born in the United States, but when he was 12 years old, he traveled to Germany where for five years he studied music. So you're starting to see maybe the potential connection. So he's learning German, he's learning music. And then when he was working back in the United States, he felt the desire to translate Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott into English because it was such a powerful hymn, a powerful ode to God and a reminder to the church to trust in God's protection and his strength. So, How it comes from Martin Luther in the 1500s, a long time ago, all the way to us, 
we can thank Frederick Hedge because he translated it into English. All right, so now that we have a little bit of the background, let's go ahead and talk about the words. All right, so let's break this down verse by verse. Now in this hymn, it's a beautiful hymn, but some of the language is pretty difficult. So we're going to take some of the harder words and talk about what they mean so that when we get to the singing part of this video, we can sing with confidence to understand. Isn't it kind of funny how the way that this started, started with a man, Martin Luther, that wanted the Bible to be understandable by everybody. So right now we're going to do the same thing even though it's already in English. We're going to work through so that we know what we're singing. It's so important for you to know what you're singing, whether it's this song or another song that you sing praising God. We should understand what we're saying. So I'm going to go through each verse and then give you a main topic of what that verse was about because sometimes it can be a little tricky talking about all these words. So first verse, we're going to take two lines at a time. These are little statements. It says, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Bulwark. What is that? A bulwark is just another word for a wall, a structure, protecting something. So a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. He is a wall that protects us, and he never fails. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. Mortal ills we can translate as sins, sins present in our world, and it's saying he's our helper. So he's our helper in a world where there's a lot of sin and hardship. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. I would say woe. There's a lot of things in there that's maybe a little difficult to understand. But it says, for still our ancient foe. Foe is another word for enemy. So in the Bible, we learn that people are not our enemy. We learn in the book of Ephesians that Paul wrote that Satan is our enemy. So the enemy is Satan. Doth seek to work us woe. Doth seek, saying he wants to, he's trying to uh, work us woe. Woe is another word for harm. So Satan wants to harm us. That's his desire. He is evil and wants to harm us. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. So he's saying that his ability, his power is great. He is powerful and he's armed with cruel hate. He's motivated by hatred, not like Jesus or not like God, where he's motivated by love. Satan is motivated by hatred. On earth is not his equal. There's nothing on this world, in this world, anything that we see that equals that power that he has. So the main point of verse 1 is God is our protection against Satan and only God can help us. Remember that word for a wall? Bulwark? So only he can protect us. All right, let's go into verse 2. Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? So confide is another word for trust. So what he's saying is if we trusted in our own strength, we would be losing, even though we're striving, we're trying hard. If we're trusting in our own strength, we're going to lose. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. So we would fail if there weren't someone else that would, we would be on our side that God chose. So it's not telling us who yet. It'll tell us in one second. But he's saying that we would lose if it were not for someone else that came in. Do you have a guess of who that might be? Here it says, dost ask who that may be? Dost is another word for do. So just like I asked you, do you know who that is? Do you know who that may be? It says, Christ Jesus, it is he. That's the answer. Jesus is our helper. And it says, Lord Sabaoth is his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. So Lord Sabaoth, Sabaoth is a Hebrew word for armies. So Lord of the armies is his name. Sounds powerful, right? When we're talking about a struggle, you want to hear that your God is powerful to fight for you. From age to age the same means that he'll never change. He must win the battle. He's going to have the victory. And we're going to fight and win because of him, not because of us. Because we didn't trust in our own strength. Do you remember the word for trust? Confide. So the main point of verse 2, we could not beat Satan without Jesus. We're always going to lose, 
but in the end, we're going to have victory with Jesus because of Jesus, and the victory is going to be Jesus. All right, we're halfway there. Let's go to verse 3. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, it's saying that this world is filled with temptations and distractions to wander away from God, our bulwark, our, our wall. They're threatening to take us away. We will not fear, for God hath willed us. Hath is an old way of saying has. His truth to triumph through us. So saying we will not be afraid. In the Bible, it says that the perfect love of God casts out fear. We won't have fear. So we will not fear. For God has willed it that his truth would triumph through us. So when we know the truth of Jesus, that he has conquered death by dying on the cross and rising again, we will have nothing to be afraid of. The prince of darkness, grim, we tremble not for him. Prince of darkness is another word for Satan. We will not tremble. We're not going to be afraid. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. So saying that he's still going to be angry, he's he's still going to be trying to distract us, for lo, his doom is sure. We know the end of the story. We know that he is defeated. And it says, one little word shall fell him. One little word. Do you know what the word is? It's a name. The name is Jesus. And that's going to be him. So the main topic of verse 3, we will not fear Satan because he cannot defeat Jesus and the gospel. The end is written. He loses. We won't be afraid. All right, we're almost there. The last verse. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. That's a little hard. The word abideth means it remains with us. It remains. So let's look at that. That word above all earthly powers, Jesus' name is above anything in the world. No thanks to them abideth. It means that his name is going to still be around even when people in this world don't believe in him. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Sideth is another word for support. So he's supporting us and the spirit and the gifts are ours. So we think about the fruit of the spirit, right? Those gifts of peace, love, kindness, gentleness, those are ours and God is with us. He's supporting us. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill. He's saying that Let all the things, the materials, all the stuff you have go. It's not worth anything. Even our bodies, they get sick, they die, they fall apart, but that's not the most important thing. It ends, it says, God's truth abideth still, his kingdom is forever. So what he's saying is Jesus is with us and living with him in heaven is the most important thing, more than anything. So as we're struggling, as we're fighting these battles, Martin Luther is telling us to remember to stay strong, that his protection, the protection of our bulwark, do you remember what that name is? That wall, he's protecting us. All right, you ready to sing? Let's go ahead, now that we've looked at the history of where it came from, looked at the words, now that we understand it, let's go ahead and sing the song.
right, that does it for this episode of Hymn Stories. I hope you enjoyed learning and singing along with the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Do you remember the German name for it? Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott. So I hope you learned a little bit about where that came from. Hope maybe the words make a little bit more sense to you now. And I hope you had a great time worshiping and singing along with me. So until next time, I'm Mr. Nathan. This has been Hymn Stories, and we'll see you next time.